Aprende inglés paso a paso. Lección 22. Nivel avanzado. Paso 1. Gramática 1. Ejercicios a traducir. Ok, are you ready? Yes, I am. Well, let's start. Depende de la añada del vino. It depends on the year of the wine. Depende de la aerolínea que elijas. It depends on the airline you choose. It depends on the airline you choose. Depende de su actitud. De él. It depends on his attitude. It depends on his attitude. Depende de su humor. De ella. It depends on her mood. It depends on her mood. Depende del tipo de altavoces que utilices. Claro. It depends on the type of speakers you use. <laughs> Depends on the type of speakers you use. Depende de la forma en que le, le preguntes. It depends on the way you ask him. It depends on the way you ask him. Cambiamos. Yo, yo en inglés y tú en castellano. Vale. Depende de si viene mi hermana o no. It depends whether my sister comes or not. Depende de si quieres invertir en bolsa o en bienes inmuebles. Hmm. It depends whether you want to invest in the stock market or in the real estate. Depende de si tengo tiempo o no. It depends whether I have time or not. Depende de si se llevan bien o no. It depends whether they get on with each other or not. Not. Depende de si utilizas gasolina o gasoil. It depends if you use petrol or diesel. Depende de si quieren comprar una casa o alquilar un apartamento. It depends whether they want to buy a house or rent a flat. Depende de si naciste en los 70 o en los 80. Hmm. It depends whether you were born in the 70s or in the 80s. <laughs> Porque te ríes. <laughs> okay. well, yes, Because sir. it's funny. Oh, okay. Paso 2. Exprésate como un nativo. Okay, it's time for an expression. Um, well, to express yourself like a native. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés, Elena? ¿De qué se ve, por ejemplo, el amor? El amor. What's the point of love? Very good. What's the point of love? Y en los casos que vamos a ver ahora, también se puede decir, what's the point in? Ejercicios a traducir. Sí. All right. Ready? ¿De qué se ve contárselo a ellos? What's the point of telling them? What's the point of telling them? ¿De qué se ve quejarte conmigo si no te quejas con tu jefe? What's the point of complaining to me If you don't complain to your boss. Bien. Um, what's the point of complaining to me if you don't complain to your boss? ¿De qué se ve ayudarla cuando ella necesita aprender de sus errores? What's the point of helping her when she needs to learn from her mistakes? What's the point of helping her when she needs to learn from her mistakes? ¿De qué se ve barrer todo el polvo que hay en tu puerta dos metros a la izquierda? Mm -hmm. Si luego viene el viento, ¿no? Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. What's the point of sweeping all the dust on your front doorstep two meters to the left? Okay, what's the point of sweeping all the dust on your front doorstep two meters to the left. There's no point. Mm, okay. se ve votar? Oh, what's the point of voti voting? Sorry. Okay, otra vez, dilo otra vez. <laughs> what's the point of voting? Bien. What's the point of voting? Voting. Okay, what's the point of voting? ¿De qué se, se ve invitar a Oliver a la fiesta? Poor Oliver, right? Oh. What's the point of inviting Oliver to the party? Very good, perfect. What's the point of inviting Oliver to the party? Um, cambiamos, ¿te parece? Vale. ¿De qué sirve hacer un esfuerzo? Mm. Well, <laughs> what's the point of making an effort? ¿De qué sirve llamar si nunca contestas? What's the point of phoning if you never answer? ¿De qué sirve levantarte temprano si luego te entra sueño? What's the point of getting up early if it makes you feel tired later in the day? Mm, ¿De qué sirve trabajar si no lo disfrutas? What's the point of working if you don't enjoy it? Oh, well, you make some money. Mm -hmm, that's true. ¿De qué sirve estudiar inglés si no estás dispuesto a utilizarlo en la vida real? What's the point of studying English if you're not prepared to use it in real life situations? <laughs> ¿De qué sirve hablarte si nunca Nunca me escuchas. What's the point of talking to you if you never listen to me? ¿De qué sirve aprender a conducir si no te puedes permitir un coche? What's the point of learning to drive if you can't afford a car? Paso 3. Pronunciación. Okay, Elena, are you hungry? A little bit, yeah. Hmm. Well, we're going to practice with the word chocolate. Okay, chocolate. Great. Right. Um, because it's very commonly mispronounced by students. Okay, we don't say chocolate. Es con dos sílabas. Chocolate. Dilo tú. Ejercicios a traducir. Okay. Depende del chocolate. <laughs> Siempre. <laughs> it depends on the chocolate. It certainly does. It depends on the chocolate. ¿Para qué se fabrica tu propio chocolate? Hmm. What's the point of making your own chocolate? What's the point of making your 
your own chocolate. Chocolates, cheap and. Um, depende de si utilizas chocolate con leche o chocolate blanco. Chocolate con leche is milk chocolate, no? Mm -hmm. Pues. It depends on whether you use milk chocolate or white chocolate. It depends on whether you use milk chocolate or white chocolate. No sirve de nada añadir más chocolate. There's no point in adding more chocolate. Ah, there's no point in adding more chocolate. Very good. ¿Y preferías que yo utilizara chocolate negro en la receta? Would you rather I used dark chocolate in the recipe? <laughs> good. Would you rather I used dark chocolate in the recipe? ¿Y se les han acabado las pepitas de chocolate? Uh oh <laughs> They've sold out of chocolate chips. Oh no, they've sold out of chocolate chips. Pon el chocolate y los plátanos en la barbacoa antes de que se apague el fuego. Okay. Put the chocolate and bananas on the barbecue before the fire goes out. Why? Um, put the chocolate and bananas on the barbecue before the fire goes out. For a fondue, maybe. Okay, let's change. Cuesta acostumbrarse al chocolate de este país. The chocolate in this country takes some time getting used to. Some time getting used to? Or también puedes decir some getting used to. Okay. In time. Vale. ¿Qué le tengo cariño al chocolate? ¿Qué insinúas? <laughs> okay, I am fond of chocolate. What are you trying to get at? Compraron chocolate en una tienda en el paseo marítimo. They bought some chocolate in a shop on the, prom on the promenade. Preferiría que no les compraras tanto chocolate a los niños. I'd rather you didn't buy the kids so much chocolate. No cabe todo el chocolate en mi maleta. Tendremos que dejar un poco. <laughs> the chocolate will all fit in my suitcase. We'll have to leave some. There's a problem there with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Alguien es adicto, ¿no? De chocolate. <laughs> sí. Oí por casualidad que Jack estuvo malo después de comer demasiado chocolate el otro día. I overheard that Jack was sick after eating too much chocolate the other day. La empresa compró una cantidad de chocolate por valor de más de 250 mil dólares el año pasado. Ooh. Okay, the company purchased over 250,000 dollars worth of chocolate last year. Very good, Elena. Perfect. Thank you. Paso 4. Phrasal verb. Okay, Elena, we've got a very difficult phrasal verb today. Wow. Okay, it's to pin down, really difficult. Why? Okay. It has three meanings, okay? It can mean um, hacer que alguien se defina. Mm -hmm. um, it can also mean saber decir. Okay. And it can also mean inmovilizar alguien, like to pin someone literally down with. Ejercicios a traducir. Vale. Es muy difícil conseguir que el ministro de exteri exteriores se defina. It's really difficult to pin the foreign secretary down. Excellent pronunciation, well done. It's really difficult to pin the foreign secretary down. Hay algo en él que no me gusta, pero no sabría decirte exactamente. Mm. There's something about him I don't like, but I can't pin it down. Excellent. Pin it down como si fuera una sola palabra. There's something about him I don't like, but I can't pin it down. ¿Puedo conseguir que te comprometas a una fecha? Can I pin you down to a date? Good. Uh, can I pin you down to a date? Es imposible definir a mi hermano en lo que se refiere a la política. It's impossible to pin my brother down politically. Yeah, it's impossible to pin my brother down politically. Okay. Um, los period periodistas intentaron conseguir que el ministro del interior se definiera respecto a su verdadera posición sobre la inmigración. Oh. <gasps> the journalists tried to pin down the Home Secretary regarding his real position on immigration. Good. Um, the journalists tried to pin down the Home Secretary regarding his real position on immigration. Hay algo muy raro en Elisa, pero no sabría decirte exactamente lo que es. There's something really weird about Elisa, but I just can't pin down what it is. Okay, good. Um, there's something really weird about Elisa, but I just can't pin down what it is. Es imposible conseguir que el director general se defina. It's impossible to pin the managing director down. Okay, it's impossible to pin the managing director down. Cambiamos. Vale, se le cayó el armario a él y le inmovilizó. Afortunadamente, Ooh. él estaba bien. Oh, good. Good news. Um, the closet fell on him and pinned him down. Luckily, he was okay. Aquel árbol te habría inmovilizado si hubieras estado ahí de pie cuando se cayó. That tree would have pinned you down if you'd been standing there when it fell. Que tenga suerte para intentar hacer que ella se defina. Llevo siglos intentándolo, pero en vano. Good luck trying to pin her down. I've been trying for ages, but to no avail. La prensa intentaba hacer que el alcalde se definiera respecto al déficit en el presupuesto. The press tried to pin down the mayor regarding the budget deficit. Hay algo en él que a ella no le gusta, pero no sabe decir, pero no sabe decir lo que es. There's something about him that she doesn't like, but she can't pin down what it is. Había en algo que a ella no le gustaba, pero no sabía decir lo que era. There was something about him that she didn't like, but she couldn't pin down what it was. Ella logró movilizar al intruso antes de llegar a la policía. Mm, muy bien, ella. Yeah. Um, she managed to pin the intruder down before the police arrived. Excellent one. Excellent work, Lena. Thank you. Paso 5.
Vocabulario. Landscapes. Paisajes. <risa> Ejercicios. A traducir. <risa> la duración de la caminata depende de si podemos andar por el barranco o no. The length of the hike depends on whether we can walk through the ravine or not. Very good. Mm, ravine. Good. Um, por este desfiladero pasa un arroyo. Mm -hmm. A stream runs through this gorge. Very good. Gorge. Um, la cala está a unos cuantos kilómetros de los acantilados. Es impresionante. The cove is a good few kilometers from the cliffs. It's breathtaking. Yeah. Cove and cliffs. Sácame una foto al lado de esta o río del río. Take a photo of me by this riverbank. Very good. By this riverbank. Excellent. Pasé toda la tarde andando por la orilla del mar. I spent all afternoon walking along the seashore. Oof. Along the seashore. Excellent. ¿Y para qué sirve ir a ver un prado? What's the point in going to see a meadow? Excellent. Un prado, a meadow. Cambiamos. Antes yo vivía al lado de una cala. I used to live by a cove. ¿Vale la pena ir a ver las praderas? Is it worth going to see the meadows? ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre un desfiladero y un barranco. What's the difference between a gorge and a ravine? Hay unas vistas impresionantes por donde los acantilados. There are breathtaking views by the cliffs. Ella vende conchas de mar en la orilla del mar. She sells seashells on the seashore. Well done. <laughs> Todo se reduce al hecho de que este arroyo está en mis tierras y no en las tuyas. What all boils down to is that this stream is on my land and not on yours. La caminata nos lleva por la orilla del río. The hike takes us along the river. Paso 6 Gramática 2 Ok, Elena, we're going to practice I wish Ok, the verb to wish okay, Which we use with the past simple in, in these cases Ok Ok, for example Ojalá tuviera un coche muy grande I wish I had a really big car Ejercicios a traducir yes. Ojalá pudiera hablar alemán Yo mm. I wish I could speak German I wish I could speak German Ojalá entendiera la televisión norteamericana mm, I wish I understood American television Excellent Ojalá fuera más alto Yo I wish I were taller I wish I were taller. Great. Ojalá yo estuviera más... Sorry. Ojalá yo estuviera más en forma. I wish I were fitter. Good. I wish I were fitter. Ahora voy a decir una frase y tú tienes que decir lo contrario. Okay. Okay. So, for example, you're fat. I wish I were thin. Okay. You have very little free time. I wish I had more free time. You have a small house. I wish I had a big house. Okay. Should we change? Okay. Pues traduce. Ojalá yo no tuviera tantos problemas. I wish I didn't have so many problems. Ojalá no tuvieras que trabajar tantas horas. I wish you didn't have to work so many hours. Ojalá yo no hablara francés tan mal. I wish I didn't speak French so badly. Ojalá yo no estuviera tan tonto. I wish I weren't so silly. And now you have to wish for the opposite. Oh, okay. You have a lot of work to do. I wish I didn't have so much work to do. You're extremely gullible. I wish I weren't so gullible. You have a lot of friends, they're always calling you, and you never have any time to yourself. I wish I didn't have so many friends. Okay. Good stuff. <laughs> Paso siete. Verbos irregulares. Ejercicios a traducir. Perdoné a mi hermano por tirarme el pasaporte a la papelera. I forgave my brother for throwing my passport in the bin. Mi hermano me disgustó cuando me tiró el pasaporte a la papelera. My brother upset me when he threw my passport in the bin. Ella nunca ha corrido una maratón. She's never run a marathon. Corrimos lo más rápido posible. We ran as fast as we possibly could. Creo que la ofendí cuando le dije lo que pensaba. Mm, I think I upset her when I told her what I thought. Ya estaba disgustado, pero cuando él dijo eso, me disgustó aún más. I was upset, but when he said that, he upset me even more. Clive perdonó a su ex vecino por robarle el periódico. Clive forgave his old neighbor for stealing his newspaper. Ok, cambiamos. Vale. Él cometió un error, pero le perdoné. Mm. He made a mistake, but I forgave him. Okay, he made a mistake, but I forgave him. Corrieron más rápido de lo que nunca habían corrido antes. They ran faster than they'd ever run before. Ok, they ran faster than they'd ever run before. No se ve de nada decir que lo sientes. Él ya te no. There's no point in saying you're sorry. He already forgave you. Yeah, there's no point in saying you're sorry. He already forgave you. Ayer corrí dos veces y ya he corrido una vez hoy. Wow. I ran twice yesterday and I've already run once today. Hey, I ran twice yesterday and I've already run once today. Oh no, no quería disgustarte. Oh no, I didn't mean to upset you. Que que, corrí todo el camino hasta aquí. I ran all the way here. I ran all the way here. Y si estás disgustado por algo, intenta no disgustar a los demás. If you're upset about something, 
important. Try not to upset the others. Yes, if you're upset about something, try not to upset the others. Very good, Elena. You too. <laughs> Thank you. Paso ocho. Comprensión auditiva. Ejercicios. Okay, Elena, how's your listening feels? All right, all right. Okay, well, let's give it some practice, <laughs> okay. okay? I'm going to read this text, and it's by Fineta. All right. Okay. Hey, Mary, which would you rather have? A sure gain of 3,000 euro or an 80% chance of winning 4,000 euro and a 20% chance of winning nothing? And what if it were a choice between a sure loss of 3,000 euro or an 80% chance of losing 4,000 euro and a 20% chance of losing nothing? Our willingness to accept risk is higher when we are facing possible loss than when the identical risk is presented in terms of potential gain. Did you get all that? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Okay. Well, uh, here are the questions, okay? Um, does Fina to give Mary two or three options in the first question? Mm. She gives her two options in the first question. Okay, good. Mm. Uh, which is the first option that she gives her? She gives her the option of a sure gain of 3,000 euro. Okay. Uh, which is the second option she gives her? Second option she gives her is that of an 80% chance of winning 4,000 euro and a 20% ch chance of winning nothing. Excellent. Uh, between which options does Mary have to choose in the second question? She has to choose between a sure loss of 3,000 euro or an 80% chance of losing 4,000 euro and a 20% chance of losing nothing. Wow, <laughs> you're really good at this. Um, and according to Fineta, which is our willingness to accept risk higher? When is our willingness to accept risk higher, sorry? Mm, according to her, our willingness to accept risk is higher when we are facing possible loss than, the ident than when the identical risk is presented in terms of potential. Potential. That is incredible, Elena. Well done. Paso nueve. Numeros. Okay, it's time for some numbers, Elena. You ready? Um, ejercicios. Ready. Okay, so I'm moving to the other branch next week, so I'll be changing my phone number. My new one will be 0044-1253-563-748. ¿Cuál será mi número nuevo de teléfono? Pues yo he apuntado 0044-1253-563-748. And that's the correct answer. If, all right, um, next one. If you want to get hold of Mike before tomorrow morning, you can reach him on 0142-367-485. Um, ¿El número de Mike? 012. 4237-467-485 Is the correct answer, yes. Can you tell me if this is the right number for Derek Peterson? This one I've got written down here is 01723-557-384 Pues 01723-557-384 Okay, good, very good. And the number you're looking for is 01653-978-990 mm, Vale, pues 06... Perdón, 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 perdón 016-5397-8 990. Okay, good. También podrías decir double, double nine O? Oh? Yeah, double nine. You can say double nine as well. Vale. Good. Good observation. Extra points. <laughs> and if you can't get him on that number, try 014-22-637-473. Pues es el 01-422-637-473. Excellent work. <laughs> and sorry, you've got through to the wrong department. You need to dial 012-527-384. Tengo so que marcar el 01-252-737-384. Excellent. Okay, next one. Just a minute. I can never remember what my number is. I think it's 0044-1242-354-463. But I'm not 100% sure. I'll ring you back in five minutes. ¿Cuál es el número que cree que es el mío? Pues crees que es el 0044-1242-354-463. Okay, so now let's do some translation. All right. Okay. You mm -hmm. say the Spanish and I'll say the English. Okay. Llama al 551-045-976. Call 551-045-976. Mi número de móvil es 0764 7 My mobile number is 0764-743-087. Mi número fijo es 312-564. My landline is 312-564. Llámanos al 555-407030. Okay, drop us a line on 555-407030. Para más información, contáctanos en el 0500-600-700. For more information, get in touch on 0500-600-700. Llámame si necesitas algo. Mi número es 067149857. Give me a shout if you need anything. My number is 067149857. ¿Cuánto has dicho que cobran por llamar al 9090-8100? Okay, how much did you say they charge for calling?
El repaso. Depende de su mood de ella. It depends on her mood. Depende de si tengo tiempo o no. It depends whether I have time or not. Depende de si naciste en los 70 o los 80. It depends whether you were born in the 70s or in the 80s. ¿De qué sirve para todo el polvo que hay en tu puerta dos metros a la izquierda? What's the point of sweeping all the dust on your front doorstep two meters to the left? Okay. Um, ¿De qué sirve quejarte conmigo si no te quejas con tu jefe? What's the point of complaining? to me if you don't complain to your boss. ¿De qué sirve estudiar inglés si no estás dispuesto a utilizarlo en la vida real? What's the point of studying English if you're not prepared to use it in real life situations? ¿Preferías que yo utilizara chocolate negro o en la receta? Would you rather I used dark chocolate in the recipe? Okay, let's change. ¿Que le tengo cariño al chocolate? ¿Qué insinuas? I'm fond of chocolate. What are you trying to get at? Hay algo en él que no me gusta, pero no sabría decirte exactamente. There's something about him I don't like. Like, but I can't pin it down. Es imposible definir a mi hermano en lo que se refiere a política. It's impossible to pin my brother down politically. Ella logró inmovilizar al intruso antes de que llegara la policía. She managed to pin the intruder down before the police arrived. La cala está a unos cuantos kilómetros de los acantilados. Es impresionante. The cove is a good few kilometers from the cliffs. It's breathtaking. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre un desfiladero y un barranco? What's the difference between a gorge and a ravine? Pasé toda la tarde andando por la orilla del I spent all afternoon walking along the seashore. Ahora, dime que deseas lo contrario, okay? Okay. You have a lot of work to do. I wish I didn't have so much work to do. You are extremely gullible. I wish I weren't so gullible. You can't speak German. I wish I could speak German. Okay, let's change. Mm -hmm. um, perdoné a mi hermano por tirarme el pasaporte a la papelera. I forgave my brother for throwing my passport in the bin. Corrieron más rápido de lo que nunca habían corrido antes. They ran faster than they'd ever run before. Creo que la ofendí cuando le dije que yo que, lo que pensaba. I think I upset her when I told her what I thought. Um, ¿Qué prefieres tener? ¿Un beneficio seguro de 3.000 euros o el 80% de posibilidades de ganar 4.000 euros? Which would you rather have? A sure gain of 3.000 euros or an 80% chance of winning 4.000 euros? <laughs> Hay un 20% de posibilidades de no perder nada. There's a 20% chance of losing nothing. Tu teléfono es el 0764743087? Is your number 07647-43087. ¿Cuánto has dicho que cobran por llamar al 9090-81100? How much did you say they charge for calling 9090-81100? Uh, llamamos al 555-407030. Drop us a line on 555-407030. Excellent work. Thank you, you too. Si te ha gustado, no dudes en suscribirte al canal de YouTube y seguirnos en Facebook y redes sociales. Hasta el próximo vídeo.